I think to get the most out of any ball machine, you have to set goals and objectives for every session. I mean, you could just set it up and hit hundreds of balls in repetition just for fun, I suppose. And I'm not going to lie, sometimes I do just set it up uh, the cylinder back to just shoot balls so I could hit for an hours on end just to exercise. But lately, I've become more focused on improving my strokes. Starting with a forehand, with this session today, my goal is to increase control through increasing racket head speed. By loosening up my hand and whipping the racket, I can increase the speed of the upward movement on the racket. It doesn't always go well, as you can see. Uh, I shanked a couple of balls before I got into a groove and got the timing of the swing down. But with the increased racket head speed, I could hit the ball at a higher launch angle and still have it dip down inside the court. And thank you kindly, Mr. Tennis Neighbor. Also, I've noticed that I often have issues dealing with balls of different depth. It's easy to settle into a groove to bang out short shot after shot uh, on the ball machine when the ball comes at the same speed and same height and same depth. So I've also spent some time today in this session working on alternating uh, moving forward and backward on my forehand to take the ball on the downward trajectory and then move forward to hit the ball on the bounce on the way up. Uh, oh, and this happens way more often than I like to admit when the slinger just stalls for a minute. Anyway, I'm uh, too lazy to edit out all that stuff out today. And again, right away I notice on the shots that, I'm, that when I'm moving back, there's not enough launch angle to clear the net sometimes. I think I'll need to do this exercise repeatedly in the next few weeks until I'm comfortable hitting either on the rise or on the drop uh, at, at the same time. Both shots needs to be natural at any time.
oddly, my backhand is on point today. It's usually the weaker of the two shots. But for the backhand, I'm working on the same thing, increasing my racket head speed on the upward motion uh, on the upper portion of the swing to increase control of the shot and trying to not flatten out as I swing across. Uh, and I'm also doing the same forward backward exercises on the backhand to make sure I'm comfortable hitting the ball on the rise as well as the on the downward trajectory uh, by moving back and forth. And of course, the mighty slice, my bread and butter. Uh, um, however, during point play and rallies, I, I do notice that oftentimes my drive back in almost always misses right after I slice the ball. So today I set up the slinger on the opposite side of the net at two-thirds speed and one-half speed uh, to simulate more of the traditional rally balls that I'm used to seeing and uh, alternate between the slice and the drive on the backhand side. I am infinitely more comfortable with the slice, but I need to get to a point where I can slice and drive at well, and there's no difference in the quality of the shot on both sides. As usual, I end my exercises with the serves. Today, I'm less focused on getting the first serves in as much as possible and hitting it as hard as possible. I'm taking about 10% off my swing to see if I can aim for the corners with higher accuracy. Uh, on both the at and the do side, I'm trying to alternate between aiming for the white serve and aiming down the tee. For whatever reason, and it is log illogical to me, uh, since I could slide for my serve pretty well, today I can't seem to find the white side of the serve on the do side, but was able to hit the white side uh, on the ad side pretty consistently.
And then the other thing that I need to work on is to disguise the serve. Uh, you could catch me sometimes changing my grip slightly to cheat on the ad side to get the ball to uh, hit the white side more consistently. I'll open up the racket face slightly before I initiate my service motion uh, by adjusting my grip. I don't have to do it from the D side, however. Um, seems to have a lot more control over my aim on the D side without having to resort to opening up the racket phase to hit the T. Uh, oddly enough, someone commented to me today that I hit my serves flat, as if hitting a flat serve is wrong. Uh, and he kept asking me uh, why I don't put more spin in my serve. And I, I sort of shrugged and said, well, it's my first serve that I'm practicing, and I would put uh, spin on my second serve. I don't know, you tell me. Do, do I need more margin on my first serves? The gentleman seems to imply that my first serve percentage is horrible. I mean, it's not great, but even with taking some power off to try and hit the corners today, I'm only getting about 60% of my first serves in. Would I like to hit 100% of my first serves? Yeah, sure. Of course, if I'm hitting them at that percentage, I use my first serve as my second serves, too, and really crank it up extra hard for my first serve. Tell me what you think. Comment below and let me know if I should... Uh, put some spin in my first serves to get in that higher percentage. <laughs> 